quiet seaside town, an evil lain to rest centuries ago, has risen. An abandoned fortress deep in the swamp holds a secret that could save the village or destroy it. Now, a band of adventurers sets out to dig up the wounds of the past and bring the light of day to the roots of ruin. This is Tabletop Gold. Hello, friends, and welcome to Tabletop Gold, episode 144 of The Roots of Ruin. My name is Lars Casting. Welcome for another uh, entertaining and exciting evening of tabletop role-playing games. I'm joined today by my associates by name of David the Tin Man Chernikov. Good that time, Lars. Good that time. Robin Lang. Uh, good associated time. Good Lars. associated time. Uh, you, uh, Armand Humphreys. Uh, good that time uh, to all associates. I got and nothing, sorry. Zoe Chernikov. Hello, comrades. Hello, comrades. <laughs> um, so we're gonna get into our game in just a second. We've got a we've got a break now from this starch madness that we've been going through. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the end of that tournament and the beginning, and hopefully the middle as well. Uh. I was excited to see the the victor coming through last week, um, which of course we all know was uh, Pasta. Congratulations once more to Pasta. Ridiculous. Uh, from Stolen David. Yet again. The eye roll Chernikov. Um, but today I just want to talk about, I just want to, to ask everybody to engage in a thought exercise. If you had the money to buy a second home anywhere in the world, I'm not asking you to uproot your life. I'm not asking you to like move to a new place. I'm asking if there was a place anywhere in the world that you had the budget to buy a home there and travel there, right? We're, we're externalizing all of those expenses. If you just had a place that you anywhere and you could get there when you wanted to, to have a sort of second life in another, another place, um, where is it that you think you might want to have this sort of side home in? So I feel like I followed you up till Second Life. Like, do you have like another life partner there? I, do you have a different Zoe and I job? were going the same direction. I was like, would I have a second family there? <laughs> I feel like vacation home. I had you, and then Second Life. I was like, oh, I see a shadow existence. All right, excuse me, How everyone. Did we both go there. So I'm not sure I've ever sworn on the podcast. What the fuck, honey? I'm right here. <laughs> I, it's not my hypothetical. I didn't mean that. What I mean is not necessarily Obviously, a Obviously, you because... didn't mean it. It's just that oh. my wife heard it. So maybe we should get to the bottom of this. She wasn't the only one. Ah, so all the ladies immediately were, were swapping out. So yeah, Women let's... notorious for living second lives. Yes. Because, yes. uh -huh. yeah. you know, one spouse isn't exhausting enough. No, no, this is, this is a good... All right, so leave behind. Okay, if you were going to have a second home somewhere and... Blah, 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 Let's just skip straight into the new life partner. What's that guy like? Oh my God. See, this is why I want to clear conversation topics with people ahead of time. This is why we have to do that small amount of pre-production. Oh. All right. So who's having but what I'm okay, what I meant by second life is that it's not necessarily like a vacation home. It's a place that if you could live in the place that you've chosen to live and also live another place. Like it's not necessarily about like if you want to live, if you wanted to to be in a resort, that's cool. But just like if you could, if you could spend time just in a different place, if you could have a life in that place in addition to your life now. To be clear, this makes total sense, and I'm not upset with Zoe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you? What were you going to say, babe? Um, no, I just we're still. It's it's like I keep getting there, and then Lars is like, but with another life with other people in it, or whatever it is he's saying. And I then, don't <laughs> think he's saying. I need that. to stop. I need to stop saying certain things. Is what I. <laughs> no, no. I I think uh, it, Lars, if correct me if I'm wrong. 
it sounds like what you're trying to get at is the distinction between like where would you like to travel if you could versus Mm -hmm. where would you like to have a consistent ongoing relationship with the place exactly it w- but exactly. The, but it's falls short of it replacing your current home it supplements Correct. your current home it's not if you could live anywhere in the world because i don't really like questions like that because like the, it, it suggests that you like hate the thing that you're doing now like i really mm-hmm. like living where it is that i live like i especially having been here during the pandemic, like I, I really appreciate and love what I have in wh- where I live, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I do think it would be cool to to be like, and also I live in X other place. Right. Not sure. necessarily as a replacement and not necessarily as a vacation, but as a, an I don't want to use the life. phrase, an alternate life. <laughs> I don't, yes, exactly. Yeah, Thank you. superior life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll answer the question. Okay. Yeah. I... I want to, I, I've, I've never been to Tokyo, but I feel like it would be exciting to have a second life in Tokyo. Wow. So that's like such an interesting, so, so the place that you go for this is not somewhere that you've been before that you feel like would be really fun to keep going back to. It is a totally new place, but that feels like it would be very romantic to develop a long-term. That's how I'm, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Like a place with many, many things that I feel like I could dive into forever. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like Tokyo is such like. Like I'm, I'm fascinated by like the the high speed rail lines. I feel like if I like it's a place, and and it's like a completely different part of the world. If you had like a a pied a terre there, you could you could go so many different places that you can't get to from New York. Yeah, that's true. Just it's, it's, it's convenient for other world traveling. Yeah, it's way easier um, to get. So to that's like my Korea. answer. That's my answer. And I also just like love. I love cities, and I just want to be in a city on another on the other side of the planet. Is basically what it comes down to. I get that. So. Plus, you'd be so close to Jiro, you could finally see him dream of. Sushi. I want to eat that guy's sushi. Is he yeah. still living? Don't tell me. <laughs> um, and does anybody else have have a thought for this as like a a second location I, that they could live a new life in? Uh, there's a lot of places that I think would be really fun to like have a a home and a home base to explore from. Um, the first thing that came into my mind, I think for similar sort of strategic reasons, but, um, felt maybe less complicated. I don't speak Japanese, um, was New Zealand. I feel like I would like mm. to have a New Zealand home. Babe, me too. That's the yeah. first thing hey. I thought of. Oh, but I got the other guy there though. So we'll have to meet <laughs> uh, up at a hotel again, or whatever. I'm really, I'm really not sure I <laughs> asked the question in a, in a clear way. Does that, that mean accent. that Zoe, you can't you're then cheating on the other guy with David? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. You're the other. Well, other one guy. of you. I, wait. Am I the side piece? I'm back in on this hypo. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, maybe one of you could take the North Island, and the other one could take the South Island. Oh, like that's you could convenient. split. You could yeah. split. Uh, you could split New Zealand. It's up. a great point, Lars. Why would we do this together? I thought of New Zealand. <laughs> I thought of New Zealand first. Uh, as well, and then sort of thought, oh well, that's kind of weird because I've never been there. It would make it would probably make more sense to pick somewhere I kind of already know that I vibe with. But it, but this kind of speculative, I bet I would vibe there, or I would love to be able to keep exploring that enough. That New Zealand is is the first thing that I thought of as well. That's right. Yeah. I love it. So the other place that I thought of is that if I was going to have a second home, I would want to use it as a refuge in case um, stuff got deteriorated you know yeah so then sure. i was like ah well first i was like new zealand that's probably probably a good bet and then i thought of the svalbard seed vault so that's how my head works mm-hmm. what is that that's like the thing in europe where they keep all the seeds yeah svalbard, svalbard. Yeah. oh sure right. it's a seed vault there yeah the second life that's the svard oh the svard vault. the svard vault seed vault is a seed vault in svard vault that's what you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> well oh sure easy okay. for you to say all right. This is another another one where the episode title may come from the upfront segment. <laughs> hard, to, hard to say, but we've got a meter beat, guys. You just sent me down such a long and winding path mm. where my initial response was just very much logical Robin response. And I was like, wait, I could really go anywhere. You could go anywhere. I, it wouldn't just be a house in Maine. Um, I it think could not be. Not a bad answer. It, it could, could be. be. Not a bad answer. Um, in the end, I think it would be Lake Como. No. Where is that? But if Where's I could afford in- uh, Northern Italy, very fancy. If I could afford to have a, if I could afford all of the things like you're, you were saying, like, don't worry about the cost of anything. Yeah. Like Como, baby. 
just at the foot of the Dolom- of the Dolomites. So you got mountains behind you. You got a lake there. It's Italy, so you're never really George that and far a mall are around in the summer. Exactly. <laughs> and if things go south, you That's can uh, you can run across the border into Switzerland. So very smart. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, Switzerland's that. a fabulous place. The other place would be <sighs> like I love Switzerland. I would happily have a house in Switzerland. Oh yeah. Well, it sounds like you you can kind of get there from your from your uh, um, what was it the the Lake the Como? Lake Como. Yeah. You get a, get a good pair of snowshoes. Armat. Speaking of snowshoes, you're in the middle of a blizzard right now. Where would you <laughs> like to go if you could go to a second place, Armat? Uh, weirdly, a lot of my um, choices are also places that don't have great weather. Like I thought about Scotland um, mm. and. Uh, like you, Lars, um, w- the one time I visited Kyoto, it was like ex- exceptionally beautiful and like lovely and clean and uh, seems like a really cool town. So that would be probably my big answer. But like you could visit me. The, oh, that's true. Don't mind if I do. We could do a house swamp where we came to, to Kyoto and Tokyo and you guys went to the North Island and the South Island. Hello. Yeah. I'm yeah. so here for it. Arma, you or I'm there look for it. We got a house it. on the north, the northern island of Japan, up in the mountains. Go skiing, hang out with no. some monkeys. But you, you, Robin, you want to go to like sort of remote, beautiful locations where you can enjoy nature. Yes. I don't need. Yeah, I don't need to be in a city. I want to. I I, I want to be a, a plant witch in the woods somewhere. Yeah. I mean, Lake Como is not really like there is plenty of stuff around there that is not remote in the na- in nature. But it's beautiful. Um, but getting a. But I could also. I see myself in a cabin somewhere in a Scandinavian country. Okay. Yeah. Mine went there too, except I've never, I guess I've never been there. So. And who gets to be your husband? <laughs> um, a very burly, uh, <laughs> Scandinavian man, obviously. Maybe, I guess that's Lars, honestly. Uh, <laughs> that and weird? scene. It, it's yeah. a little weird. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good episode. Kidding! Sunny, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um all right let's uh let's move on we before we get into our game i want to say thank you to uh the various lovely people who leave us uh reviews on podcast apps thank you so much we got this from bobo feet who left a review on podcast attic that says and this this one is really exciting to me it says nang nang bo yes 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 i'll have whatever Ooh. she has which Ooh. is taking nang nang bonobo turning it into nang nang bona yes and then making it into a When Harry Met Sally reference. I love it. Wow, this. there's a lot going on right there. I loved it. Everything is good about that. A plus work. A plus well work. Thank well you, done. Bobo Feet, for, uh, for that review on Podcast Addict. It helps us out a ton. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is episode 144. We're about to break off another five. This is use it or lose it territory. Uh, if you recall what happened at the end of the last episode, maybe you maybe use it. Maybe now it's time to use it rather than lose it. I don't know. Uh, oh. Let's uh, get into it. Let's, uh, let's play our game. The quest for the final shard of the five-pointed key that will open the door standing between you and the devil Euravian seems to have reached an end. You are currently in a swelteringly hot room a round magma-filled chamber containing a summoning circle and two devils engaged in a centuries-long argument about how to convert that circle into a bona fide gate to hell. The two having this argument are a pair of sisters, each with the appearance of a fallen angel with long black hair, and one of them holds the key you are seeking around her neck. They have just seen you and paused their argument, perhaps for the first time in decades, to ask you what you want. Big question. Okay, so the pause in the yelling between these two has made this room suddenly very quiet. As you consider your answer to this question, The silence is interrupted only by the occasional drip of water coming coming down from the ceiling above. The two devil sisters have each raised an eyebrow and are looking at you expectantly. So, what do you do? Lars, 
Can I ask you a question about lava? <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. I'd love... Uh, please. You'd lava it? Yeah. Uh, multiple questions. Sub Side question. Is the floor made of it? Some of the floor in this room is made of it. Does that answer your question, David? Um, it, like, I, I would assume lava is. that... <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, boy. Bravo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah David. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is what's lava got to do with it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, oh, my God, I love this. It, I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> that, like, we can't step on it or we'll die, right? It's it certainly looks like it'll it'll hurt. Yeah, it'll definitely smart to get into that lava. So will it always lava you? <laughs> yeah, it'll lava you until you die. Um. Okay. Is that a song? I don't know. I believe it I don't know. Called lava. I don't. <laughs> um. Okay, so, so great. hey guys, we don't, instead we don't... of doing puns, can we lock in on this uh, thing that we're doing, yes, please? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, Thank sorry. you. We don't, so we don't want to Working fight uh, them in here very much. If It seems unpleasant to fight in a room where we can't move around at all. So that's what my question was about. Like, sometimes the, you said it was lava last time, sometimes the art is very evocative, but isn't mechanically anything. But this is mechanically incredibly intense. Like, don't step there. We cannot physically get to them without burning. Without without moment. dying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I imagine so for some reason I had this image of Trill as they asked that question, trying to figure it kind of thinking the same thing that you're thinking, David, of like we need to engage them in a way rather than just like yes. having them stay up there. So Trill immediately for some reason wants to lie. And say uh, well, we have an appointment with your Ravian, but I'm looking for the last part of this key. And she holds up the four points that she has of the key right there to try and get the one who has the fifth one to come closer so that she can, because the goal is to get that last part of the key. Okay. So you're telling her that you have the key. And that we have an appointment with your Ravian. So she is trying to uh, deceive her a bit. Okay, let's get a let's get a lie check. Let's do that. that. You can either do that in basic action macros, or you can just throw a blind deception my way, please. Uh, let's see. Let's do lie. So one of the two devils looks at the sister that has the the key, and she says, "These fools doth not have any appointment with Euravian." Yes, sister, but I doth believe that they do want the piece of this key that we hold. And the first sister says, Well, it seems as though we doth agree upon that, then don't we? The first agreement that we have had in quite some time. And they both look at you and they say, We were just about to finish our argument and now we must start it again. Yes, she was about to break. She was about to agree with me on how to turn this portal into a gate from to hell. And now we must start our conversation over from question, the beginning. Question, what? Ao raises a paw. What if we decided the argument for you? Okay, They so they, they, shrug, they think for a second and they say, don't, any one of you have any knowledge at all, even, about planes, extra planar travel, or Obviously, anything? Obviously, what I have Isthin offered roll... to settle. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, can Isthin roll Arcana to see what he knows about interplanar travel? And Mag mutters under her breath, hath, hath not Trill recently uh, additional book learning? with regard to um, Forsooth uh, devils. I mean, there is devil lore, but I don't know if that's... Yeah, so yes. I mean... Right? Uh, um, so not... they, see the, they see the four of you huddle together, and they're like, Take thine time! <laughs> Just let us know what thou wantest to do. 
Trill, you've got your book. Is then you can probably figure something out, and I'll I'll, yeah. I'll either figure it out or I'll lie about it. And I think, I, and I've been inside the bag of holding. That's a whole other extra. That's extra planer. And um, um, the 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 Motley Man. Motley Man. Even. The yes. Motley Man. I've, tra- the Motley I've traveled Man. to other planes in my brain. Sure. It's a Motley Lane. Dr- Drury Plane. <laughs> Drury Plane. Uh, blind. I don't know what you're doing. Tell me, tell me what you're saying. Oh. So, so you're you're talking as a group. What are you saying to these yeah. two ladies? And what check am I paying attention to? One person gets to do a check. Yeah, I think it should be a- Ao. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I've, I've got a plus our le- rather, a plus eleven Arcana. Or we could, or you could just try lying to them if if it's frown day. Well, I think if it fails, then I'm gonna lie. Okay. For. Making Wait, an arcana check. I have a 16 arcana. Oh, then you do it. I'll, I'll be back yeah. up liar. You do the check. So as as you're huddling and coming up with a plan of what to do, uh, perhaps Trill notices that these two devils are getting angrier and angrier. You get the sense that these Araignees, the, the, the two of these these creatures are the same, same kind of devil. These are... Fury devils. These are devils known for their rampant, outrageous anger. It seems as though Bark and Buck channeled that energy into a relationship with a uh, his work. But these two are getting more and more furious. So whatever it is that you do, whatever it is you say to them, it better be very good. Thank you. So is them. We, we gotta make this good, guys. Right, um, Istin, this is you. I'm not always great at social things, but I, I do remember I read a couple of books about uh, interplanar. Istin, Istin, hey, what? hey, we don't have time for this. Look here, look here. What do you know? Yeah, right. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, and I'm going to make that arcane check. Is that sound like the plan? Yeah. Do it out in the open, please. That is a 13 on the die for a 29. Okay. That's a success. <sighs> so give me just a sense of what sort of thing Istin is saying. Yeah. What about were, extra planar whatever? What was the thing that they had said they were debating between whether or not they were they were debating? And this is a great question that I definitely didn't delete from my notes. <laughs> uh, so I'm very glad that you asked it. <laughs> Answer. They were debating. Right sorry. <laughs> they were debating um, whether one of them was saying that the portal relies on the thinning boundary between the planes. The other one is saying is that the thinning boundary between the planes creates a substrate that the portal uses to manifest into port- permanence. So the question is: Is it about the thinning boundary between the planes, or is it that the thinning boundary creates the substrate? Hmm. Well, Istin obviously it, knows. What if the substrate creates a setting boundary? That seems like a distinction without a difference. Maybe that's yeah. Well, what do you what are you talking about, David? How dare you? Whose side <laughs> are you on? Well, I, I have to imagine if you want a permanent portal uh, that is a rift within the the dimensional fabric weave, um, a thinning of the veil could be useful into making that permanent. However, it also may a road and lead to uh, thinning in the veil to other places within the multiverse. And so you may find that the thinning of the veil actually eventually ends up working against what you want. Tell me you've written for comic books without telling me you've written for comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Mag the devil nods shout- lustily. <laughs> <laughs> they shout out, silence! What foolishness! And the other one's like, well, sister... Let us not be too hasty. There is a chance that the mortal hath come upon some sort of breakthrough here. And the first sister is like, you're not just saying that, are you? You you think that? And with that, I'm going to call that a make an impression. They shift from hostile to unfriendly. Mm. And nice. let's let's just say that if what you want is for them to give you the key, let's do that mechanically. There's something called request. 
You can request something once an NPC is friendly or helpful to you, which you are two steps away from. The request is a diplomacy check. So if you're able to warm these two up to friendly, which is two notches up from unfriendly where they are now, they may hand the key to you. However, if you knock them back down to hostile, they will attack. So, Isthen has broken the ice with this uh, arcane nonsense. So, what's next? If you need my source, it's Prendergast and Martin uh, 4721AR. <laughs> So Ao seeing this moment, um, having you know, kind of got diverted their attention, says, I, "I mean, two two such illustrious women as yourselves, you must have been debating this for a while. I mean, your brain power must be immense." They, so she's trying they, to like get them talking to find something she can like get get. Oh, I I see. So I so mean, you're not yeah. you're not. You're are you, you're not making an impression right now. You're just trying to get them to say some stuff. I'm trying to so, be like eight seconds away from making an impression. I got it. So so <laughs> always, they always they turn to each other and they're getting mad again and they're like, "Well, she knows nothing. She don't think she is such an expert." And the first one is like, D "You are the one who uh, you mother loved you best." And uh, like they're they're at each other's throats for for a moment, and they they finally reach an accord and they say, "But yes, we are quite quite intelligent." I mean, how and how that, old are you? How long have you been down here? I, I I can only imagine the wisdom that comes with th this. She says, realizing she has no further words. So now now she's sort of trying to like uh, you know. Make them feel a kinship enough that they'll tell a story. Well, we were summoned here centuries ago when a human by the name of Belcora summoned us here via this summoning circle. And, yeah, quiet, I'll tell the story better. Uh, yes, yeah, she summoned us into the summoning circle. Uh, and she bonded a devil, Euravian, which you claimed to have an appointment with, which mm -hmm, I know thou mm -hmm. dost not have an appointment with. We arrived here via the portal, and for thine last hundreds of years since then, we hath been arguing about how to transform this circle into a true gate, yes? Yes, yes, of course. And you need us to... To settle that for you, once and for all, you can you can achieve your contract. They they say so. Thou dost think that thou can resolve our argument? Fine. Resolve it. And they clap twice in unison. I imagine Trill would dig into her devil lore and pull out. Um, like a lullaby that she might know that she had learned through her devil lore. And she starts playing that to try and soothe them a little bit. Um, I was saying, it sounds like you two really miss home as well. So they say resolve it. And your response is not to give them the like arcane magical information they need. It's to get them to cooperate and work yeah, together more effectively. Solve our fight. I bet it must be, I, I bet the two of you must be so tired of each other, but you gotta remember your sisters. All the while she's playing this, like hoping that maybe they recognize um, the song. Okay. Uh, and get the you hopes can... for it to make an impression there. Give me either a performance or a devil lore check. Whether um, you want to rely on esoteric knowledge of devils to resolve their, uh, oh, you know, oh, lack okay. of disjunction or, performance. or if you wanted to perf do a performance, like, do you want to lean more on Trill's performance or do you want to lean more on Trill's knowledge of devils? I think I want to lean on Trill's performance if I'm just thinking about stats. 
<laughs> That's the game. That's what we're doing here. Let's uh, do it. Is this blind or not? No, this is a, a live performance. We're going to see exactly how well this does. Uh, so that's a 27? Use it not or... a it was only great an eight roll. on the die. Um, if it's not a great roll, I think it's use it or lose yeah. it zone. So let's, because uh, I certainly don't want to piss them off and drop us back down. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and use that hero point. Okay. Hey, guys. You know how when we usually use a hero point to reroll something, it's worse? Right. Uh, that, that was a 20 on the die! Woo! 39! Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Your first roll was a success. <laughs> and the moment you said, I'm going to re-roll this, I was like, this is how it all falls apart. <laughs> this is how I get what I want. <laughs> how I get what I want, Lars. But then you rolled a 20 on the die. Critical su success in Make an Impression is that the target's attitude improves towards you by two steps. Whoa. Wow. So they move from unfriendly through the middle one, which is like, we don't care about you. I forget what it's Indifferent called. Indifferent or something? Indifferent, thank you. And they go straight to being friendly towards you. So you played Maybe? this song about like devil sistership. Is that what you're singing about? <laughs> it was a lullaby was too, right? A lullaby. lullaby. I, I how imagine. How did it if, sound? If, if I could choose what their response would be, it would be like they recall hearing this while in their infernal cribs. And it sounds kind of like. <laughs> Yeah, I asked. Beautiful. I did a beautiful ask. song. It's a beautiful That's song. That's so good. So Trill does that, and they instantly go from unfriendly. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's all it took. It's like um, it's like Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, but in <laughs> yeah. four, de four Devils. Yeah. Or Johnny Cash's version of Hurt. <laughs> so you see them as they flash back to their infancy. I'm going now to the category of songs that I keep for our soundtrack called Sadness, which I never get to play. Oh. Here we go. And as Trill's heinous song <laughs> plays, she knows her devil lore. the sound, you, you notice that the, the circular chamber, one, it's hot as blazes. But two, as Trill's song hits the walls, the sound bounces around the edges of the room and sort of reinforces itself. And it sounds as though there are a dozen Trills playing this song in unison. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. You take 29 points of mental damage. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. And you see these fury devils, their faces soften from anger and outrage towards you. And their, their outrage towards you drifts away. Holy and shit. then they look towards each other and they're grimacing. It's like a, uh, you know how like at the beginning of Mortal Kombat where you see the two, the two of them face to face and they're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're, they're, you know, grimacing and, and, about to, to knock each other's block off. But then that fades too. And the two of them, one the one on the right, the one with the necklace around her neck, reaches her arm out and softly touches her sister on the shoulder. And then in one fluid motion, her sister throws her arms around her and they embrace just silently, not sobbing. It's not ridiculous, but they have so a moment. They're still ironies. They, they still have some gravitas to them. Yeah. I mean, Trill basically just pulled the full Orpheus, save for the sobbing bit. <laughs> That's right. And they look never towards look back, you. Never look back. And they say, yeah. Thou hast pulled the full Orpheus. <laughs> <laughs> we know Greek mythology. Oh, it means something very different. Uh, <laughs> <in her. laughs> 
Yeah, there's a more colloquial uh, version of that, and you don't want to inquire. And they, they say to each other, perhaps we should work together, mine sister, to create this gate to hell. <laughs> now we will truly succeed in our goal of forging a permanent highway between hell and this area just 20 minutes outside of Otari. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, do we want that? Do we want that? Ayo oh. shrugs. They can sell the trill cakes. <laughs> A whole new market. I, <laughs> Good old infernal market. It seems as though they are satisfied that you have resolved their argument in an unexpected way. But if you would like, you can now make a request. Well, it's, and it's, uh, it's funny you should mention, you know, sort of like awkwardly sticks her hands in her pockets. The idea of, um, of working together. We're so inspired that you two will be working together that we're hoping the four of us who also have um, been arguing and have to figure out how to open a portal. We were just thinking maybe you could give us the piece of the um, help us with your infinite wisdom to solve the portal we need to open. And she's sort of like awkwardly fumbling around her neck. Behind her, Mag is nodding lustily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they consider this. Give me a diplomacy check. Give you a I'm going to let you know. Check. Critical success. They do what you want without qualifications. Success. They do what you want, but they might demand something extra from you or some alterations. Failure, they refuse the request, but they might propose an alternative that is less extreme. Critical failure, they re refuse the request, and I'm just going to say they attack you. It does, I lost you somewhere in there because I rolled, and I got a 20 on the die for a 35! <laughs> And let me tell you, I actually am quite good at diplomacy, so it makes the total number very high. What a day. What a day. Okay, so if you had fought these guys, here's what would have happened. <laughs> uh, they would have thrown you in lava. Uh, okay. Taken out so, your eyes. This is not where we thought this was going to go. I was terrified coming into this encounter Yeah, I was today. trying to figure out how to, like, run Fight them back. Be lava? like, there's something in the central chamber. You got to come take a look. It's far away from this lava lake that you live in. <laughs> that was my best idea. Can I be honest, you guys? Yeah. I'm kind of bummed we're not fighting these guys. That checks out. Like, I really wanted to fight these guys. I'm always, I was I'm always really you still could, man. It. Let's just get that necklace. We'll leave you. You have a perfectly <laughs> nice fight with them. We and do. we'll go open the portal. We could do a bonus episode. And then you get a new companion uh, <laughs> yeah, on the next episode. Yeah. yeah. Armet, you get exactly what you want. You get to have a fight, and then you get to roll a new character. This is, like, all you want favorite. out of any episode I mean, of this show. This is how the Dampier Detective shows up. The Dampier <gasps> One Detective. One day. One day. Armet just goes Leroy Jenkins and starts throwing shit at these two. <laughs> um, um, I, we, could, we could do a bonus episode. Episode where we where we fight them uh, until we win, <laughs> and we just see how many times it takes. Okay, we we I'm here our match. Right, our match just plays all our characters. <laughs> oh, I so, really like that actually. Our match. Uh, run my own party. I've never daydreamed about building up four characters that were designed to work together. No, of course not. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's not my dream that I have posters of up on my wall. Of the <laughs> Fantabulous Five. I want to see these posters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's get those in the merch shop. Yeah. So the two, the two look at each other and they say, Well, Euravian's contract with us never said that we should defend thine key that thou hast around thy neck. We were only to forge this gate. And now we assuredly will forge that gate. And doesn't yes, it just put just you on equal footing anyway? Equal footing. Sorry, equal winging? I'm sorry, I don't... I doubt not understand what thou meanest with that. Should, if neither of you is carrying some heavy... Um, so, some heavy key, you can really work equally with each other. And the one that wasn't holding the key was is like, Yes! 
That explains why thine arguments have been so bad. Because that key has been weighing thine brain down. <laughs> the other one says, that doesn't even make any sense. Thy and impressive, the wonderful brain. <clears throat> Elbows trill. And she, uh, she says, see, they like me. And she rips the necklace off of her neck and throws it across the lava. And you see this point of this star revolving in midair, reflecting this magma back as it sails across this 15 foot gap, the uh, little leather band that it's on trailing behind it. And you hear Pop! as it hits Mag's hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you now have all five pieces of your Ravian's key. Woo! Woo! All right. Hey, as you're standing in this room, Maybe somebody wants to give me a nature check as you look around and get a sense of what's going on. Uh, what's going on here? I appear in the remaster of, to have become okay at nature, which is as surprising to me as it is to anyone. But if any, if <laughs> so long as one of us has nature, and none of us have had nature for a while, I yeah. think. Yeah, nature has not been so meaningful. We're below in ground. This, uh, Sorry, I, did, I did that secret. I don't know. If I'll, 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 I'll reveal it. It's fine. A rolled a 29. It's no 20 on the die, but it is a, a 19 on the die. Dang, hot dice. Hmm. Extremely hot dice. What is happening? I don't like keep it. it. Stop Let's doing keep it. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> so with that 29, Ao looks up at that crack in the ceiling. You see the water dripping down out of it. You get the sense that if you were to somehow widen that hole. If you were to if you were to potentially create a channel or or just just open it somehow. Water would rush through that hole and would extinguish the magma here. Hmm. And if that were to happen, the magma would turn to stone and that would destroy this summoning circle. The circle is powered. The gate that they're trying to make is powered by this magma in oh. this room. Hmm. But then they would attack us. But then we wouldn't have to deal with the lava <laughs> while fighting them. Right, it would be an easier Too fight. Sure. As you're saying that, though, as you're considering that, it does seem as though it would take several hours to, to open this hole enough. Um, oh, so you do it you do it from the from up above. You dive down from up above and widen the hole oh, at the bottom what are of the we, lake. What are we below? Do we have any sense? I, I'm sure we're lake, below probably. the lake where the where the hydras the were hydras. and then Sar the Sarglagon that we just defeated. Uh, so if we wanted, we could head back up there. Mag could take a really deep breath so she can hold her breath for like nine hours now <laughs> and go down there and, <laughs> and smash the bottom of the of the lake until it, the crack gets big enough to that actually feels also very in keeping with Mag's um, Mag's prime directive, which is to keep Otari safe. Yes, she is something of a completist when it comes to destroying things that could be beamed out of the lighthouse and into the <laughs> middle of her home. Like, for instance, say, all of the residents of hell. That's an example. Oh, right. Just, well, just one example. It's a portal to yeah. hell. Hell, yeah. So now we have the ability to go... To go say hello to Euravian, and we also have the knowledge we need to neutralize this gate to hell. So it's sort of like, which order do we tackle things in? I go ahead and knock out the gate to hell. It feels like it's not going to be so hard. So these these two um, these devil these two devils return to their work. They're no longer paying attention to you, and it seems as though your business here is pretty much done. And Ao just begins, like, quietly backing down the hallway. Let's get out of here before they get pissed again. So we're going back to the lake. <laughs> back to the lake. So you head back through that central chamber, up the stairs, around this passageway leading through the cavern, and you are back at the lake where you fought the Sarglagon. Here on the sixth floor of the Abomination Vaults. And 
It sounds like you basically have a plan already. Mag is going to use the fact that she can hold her breath forever to uh, to steadily work on this process of creating a hole from the lake down to the uh, summoning portal below. Yes. I'm- what are you going to use? Like, so what? So so what happens? I mean, I guess I guess the first thing is she needs to dive down and get a look at she, she's she's going to, I guess, first inspect whatever's visible up above the surface of the water to see if there's any sign of like an exit point for the water. She assumes that it would be below the water level, that it's going to be like in the bottom of the chamber somewhere. So does yeah. she see anything at the surface or you? You don't see anything at the surface. You got a pretty good look at this area before when you found your armor that you're now wearing. Yeah. Okay. Then um, I'm going to dive down beneath the surface below to see if there's any obvious exit point for the water. So, Mag dives into the water, holds her breath, easily swims down at the bottom. It's 10 feet deep, 15 feet deep. Not, it's not, it's not hard. 15 feet deep. Mag doesn't see anything. Give me a give me a perception check, actually, David. Let me let me tell you. Give me a an, uh, an open perception check. Sure. <laughs> it, it is in a way a shame it's not a fight. Uh, we d- we need to tell the listeners that it's another natural twenty. It, it really this is this must be breaking the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be. Okay, guys, here's what happens. Mag swims down into the water, doesn't see anything, but you start feeling around with your hands and you you catch like a bit of a warm updraft, like a, a bit, a, like a, a small point on the water where the temperature is warmer. Okay. And you dive down and you start running your hands on the bottom of the lake and you feel a point that is notably warm to the touch. Like you notice how warm it is and you get the sense that this point is the thinnest point between this chamber and the chamber below. I'm sorry, a natural 20 doesn't get us a bathtub plug in the bottom of this lake? (laughs) 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 Um, All right, so... Does that trigger a reactive strike? No. Um, Okay, I think... um, if that's the thinnest point, I think the thing to do is to, this is going to shock everybody, but to try to bash it with a hammer. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this with what are called simple DCs. I'm, we're, we're, we're playing, yeah. we're playing our own game now. This is it. not, this is not how this game actually works, but we're, we're doing it. So Mag is going to be able to succeed at this no matter what, okay? Because so right. essentially, it's a matter of I'm time. going to. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. So I'm going to give you one athletics check, okay? And that athletics check is going to tell you how long it takes Mag because this is going to take some time because Mag is diving and it's going to take a ton of ton of uh, energy and athletic strength and, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. Because Mag isn't just going to be able to sit there and tink away at this thing. She has to swim down, go back up, grab air, go back. Right, There's this is a deeply difficult athletic task. Sure. Okay? And here's how we're going to do it. The legendary DC, DC 40, if you get that, takes an hour. The master DC, DC 30, if you hit that, it's going to take two hours. The expert DC, DC 20, that's going to take three hours. The trained DC, DC 15, four hours. DC 10, untrained, the untrained DC, five hours. Wow. Well, here goes. All right, 11 on the die for a 29. I'm just going to hero point it and roll again. (laughs) Okay, great. Sorry, man. No, it's good. I'm so glad everybody's having fun tonight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just the episode you were that. hoping for. <laughs> yes. Well, that That's got worse. Thing. Now it's the same. There you go. Now okay. it did the thing. What did you roll? You um, roll? It was a three on the die. We're still, we're still, um, it's a 21. So it's in the same okay. range as before. Matt, David, here's what I'm imagining. Yeah. And tell me if this is wrong. If, if you guys don't, don't think this is right, tell me. But I'm just, 
picturing this like three hour long process where Mag is like steadily diving in, spending about 45, however long it is, down there chipping away at this thing, Mm -hmm. emerging from the water, gasping for breath. And as that happens dozens and dozens and dozens of times, I wonder if the three of you that are watching from the shore are struck anew by how dedicated Mag is to keeping this town safe. Like the thing that Mag is going through, three straight hours of pure effort on an idea that none of you really know if it's gonna work at all. This could be Mag essentially swimming multiple marathons for no positive end whatsoever. Right? Do you get what I mean? Like, if you were to watch somebody doing that for three hours, I think it would be genuinely moving to see somebody going through this just to save their home, like just to protect people around their town. Yeah, I imagine maybe as she's resurfacing, she's she's also saying that she believes I I see what's down there. I've I've driven pythons into a crack. And with each blow I can see the crack loosening ever so slightly. It'll only be a matter of of time. This is essentially crafting Mag. She's using her body right. to do it, sure. but this is the part of Mag's personality that 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 crafts and that will, you know, get focused into something like that and keep pursuing it all day long if that's what it takes. I think on her next surfacing, Istin is waiting with a towel and like orange slices. <laughs> You know, Cheryl's playing Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> You've got this, Mag. You're Thank you. Amazing. So we'll ward off discouragement <laughs> as well as scurvy. And Mag dives back down again. N- need any help in there? Ale half heartedly asks, making sure to finish <laughs> the question as Mag dives below the water and can't hear her. <laughs> While filing her, uh, her claws. Right. <laughs> Hero point for Zoe for that. <laughs> Phenomenal work. <laughs> Be nice to just burn that. And after about three hours of that, Mag swings the hammer down one more time. Like maybe Mag at this point, it's like gotta be pure instinct, right? Just like Mag is is just executing something, pure focus, pure, just pure exertion. And you feel your hand start to get sucked down a little bit as you as you crack through the last bit of the floor. And you're able to scramble quickly, swim steadily back up to the surface of the water. Again, all of this is possible just because of Mag's insanely capable breath lung situation, right? But as soon as Mag manages to get back up into the shore, you look down and there is a plume after a few moments of sort of rumbling, a plume of steam that just jets straight up out of the top of the, uh, out of the top of the lake. And it's like a, like you're inside of a Russian bath or something where suddenly this, this entire room starts feeling like a, like a sauna. There's just this shower of of hot water sort of raining down on you I imagine as you Lars, realize that yeah this has ahead. to this has to be something like a geyser no isn't this what's up with geysers yeah i, yeah, I think i think basically you've just created a geyser here and the four of you look out onto this room as this jet of of steam bursts out raining on top of you and like the light from mag's wayfinder maybe catches the 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 cloud of vapor in front of you and 
maybe even like the faintest rainbow appears in front of you. <laughs> and you realize Aww. that you have completed this task, that you have broken through the floor of the lake and that over the next few hours, this magma will cool to stone, deactivating this summoning circle. Can we like right. peek it all and see what the ladies are up to? Or is it like the water is flowing too slowly to be able to do that right now? Well, you consider what it would be like to stick your head into a geyser for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. If you, if you want to take a look, you can. It seems potentially like the hot water jet, like the steam jetting up might, might impede that slightly. Mm. Um, if Ao did, would you tell us that you guys are crazy? <laughs> I just like don't understand what I'm supposed to say to any of these. Like I don't know what that the desired one? response is. The, for that Silence one, Lars. Like what am I supposed to do? It. We fire okay, him and we ignore it. On yeah, that one. straight man. It's it. been a delight working with you guys. So <laughs> thank you for the experience. Like what do I? What do, we, what do you do? Encourage that behavior. <laughs> like can somebody write me a script for what it is that I'm supposed to do to these puns? Am I supposed to be like? That was great. <laughs> I loved it. You're supposed to do exactly what you do. That's why we do that. How about like a, oh, okay. a joyful Perfect. clap, Lars? Like a, <laughs> uh, like, a, like a seal, like a porpoise? Yes, yes. <laughs> Man, you, okay. you guys are getting some mackerel later. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So no on the steam head thing. Um, Trill, do you have any snooks left? I, I think I finished my last one. Trill pulls out a snook that's kind of falling apart from her little hip pouch. I, I mean, I got this one left, and I don't know if anyone really wants it. She, she doesn't have a lot of Oh, here, here, space. I'll get it back in shape, and Ao begins wrapping gauze around the snook to hand the bag <laughs> to She's suddenly to missing mend it. having um, her harp that had the, uh, the spare um, flask in it. <laughs> Mag pulls a, a perfectly preserved snook out of the bag of holding and begins to eat it. Mag has to be hungrier than she's ever been in her life. Uh, right yes, I think Mag is hungry, and Mag also is interested in watching what happens in this chamber from from a distance. Um, uh, maybe even heading inside because there's various places where you can watch this room from inside, right? Or or there's the there's the kind of balcony thing. Don't stand next to a geyser. That's what Mag is thinking. Mag is thinking I'm hungry and oh, I would I like to enjoy this snack far away from the collision that I've just created between magma and cold water. Because the last so time I Mag love, failed to so think about that sort of thing, it exploded and it killed her friend. So she's gonna she's gonna encourage everyone to get a little bit of distance from that. I love that like AO's initial move is like, let's get closer to this. And Mag's initial move is like, we gotta get away from Back this thing like, <laughs> yeah. immediately. Yeah, that checks out. So, yeah, you're able to set up a sort of watch point from behind this uh, this glass wall, this transparent stone, and Mag is able to, like, sit back and snack as she watches the steam in this room get thicker and thicker. I've been watching a, like, reasonable number of videos of people cutting down trees recently. I imagine it's a very similar satisfaction. You know, you're watching this big sort of phenomenal thing happen. Nature doing yeah. its thing, gravity doing its thing, basically. You're watching gravity do its thing. That's, yeah. Absolutely. It's nature reclaiming part of this vast underground world that has been twisted towards evil for so long. Yeah. Nature and is healing. And that potential. Nature is healing. Nature So, you spend some time watching over this steam room that you've created. It's around three o'clock in the afternoon. What are we doing now? Well, how are we on like sp spells? Like, how's everyone feeling? Are we up for like the big boss fight and we're gonna go try and talk go. our way out of it? And then Heck yeah. uh, have our map be the only one who's happy when that fails? <laughs> yeah, Trill's good to go. Trill's ready to go read some. I got, what is not infernal? What what is the actual language now? The thing is, like, 
It's this so this is le- legitimately the thing that I hate most about the remaster deal is the changes to lore because like I barely learned what Infernal was. <laughs> like it's just not it's just not my strong suit. It's totally so totally different name now, right? Yeah, it's a totally different name now. But you know, when we when we did our whole plan for how we're doing the remaster for this show, we didn't really it was like lore. lore lore stays what it is. Um, I can't go through this book and change. Because they changed the name of Undercommon too. Undercommon is now um, Sakvoroth. Oh, no, not interested. Right. I thought that was the one for Infernal. That's that's the difference. I don't know. Maybe it. Who knows? Who's to say? There's no way. It's to. Unknowable. So, you make your way down that same central staircase, and as you step down the steps to the seventh floor once more, you notice immediately the pentagram door to your west looms large in front of you. And you're able to spot that fist-sized cavity waiting for this key. What do you do? So Trill takes all the pieces out. And she finally takes a moment now to fit that fifth piece in. And to see the whole thing fitting together. Snaps together like a like a puzzle, like an ex- like a nice, expensive wooden puzzle. Trill looks back at everyone, kind of nods, and starts walking towards that gate. And she goes to put the key in, but she's too short. <laughs> it's, oh. You strain to reach the key up to the <laughs> hole, and you it's just not happening. She's too short, so she looks back. And she's like, "Oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, help, please!" Yep. Mag, Mag, do the lift. Mag walks over and does the dirty <laughs> dancing lift with Trill. Yes. <laughs> or I guess Trill would have to get a running start, so it's. <laughs> Mag assumes the position. She always has the time of her life with you. <laughs> the key slides in perfectly, clicks in, and then as if the door has been waiting for the key. It starts to spin on its own, like it's boring its way through the door. And then you hear, as a line appears through the center of this pentagram. And you feel like a burst of, of gentle air come from this crack that has formed between these two doors as they swing outwards towards you. And the door is open. What do you do? Oh, is this the time maybe to use that wand we got with the seat with the eye? Maybe we maybe we shouldn't just walk right in. Trill's got uh, we got from that altar room, yeah. Um, a wand with a uh, spell. I'm trying to remember the exact name of it. Scouting um, eye. I yeah, scouting called. eye, which allows us to um, send essentially like an eye. Right, it creates like a one inch eye. Yeah, and it we can send it into a location we can see within 500 feet, and okay. it can seek while we're um, rather than having us go in there. Right, so it like tells me what's there. So Trill pulls out this gem, utters the incantation for casting a spell, and nothing happens because this is not a wand of Scouting Eye. You so misidentified why is the my item. activations. You misidentified the oh, item. We crit you got a it. natural one <laughs> on your identification. No! So what uh, happened? Like having this level five uh, wand oh, was so, so good. Well, what gets cast instead, though? The one, like we've activated the wand now. No, it, it's not a wand. It's a bu- some sort you of gem. You don't know what it is. It's just some sort of a gem. <laughs> you don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Chekhov's Chekhov's eyeball wand over here. How long have we been waiting for that? So yeah, this is a uh, Trill looks at this thing and is like, Something what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, and she puts it back in her bag and her, I think she had it in her wig too. <laughs> yeah. 
You had this oh, unknown right. magical elemental. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just spoiled. Uh, you had this unknown gem in your wig. So Trill goes and puts it in the bag of holding. We'll figure this out later. <laughs> really annoyed. I could, I could try. Hold on. Let me see if the hand can learn anything. And Ao sort of like can sense the hand <laughs> skittering into the room. Like she's not trying to look at all, but it's just sort of groping around. Yeah, you just hear her like, uh, hello? <laughs> what? Uh, th- then you hear like a whisper like, dude, I just heard somebody cast a spell out there. What? Watch out. It's going to be bad. And then a few minutes later, or a few seconds later, the first devil that you hear is like, I don't think anything's happening. I don't think it's bad, dude. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, well, what do you think they're doing out there then? Why aren't they coming in, dude? How big are devils? Uh, de- it the depends. The, yeah, the, the, the devils that you've seen are... But Jack is tiny. Jack is tiny, but but the some of the devils that you've seen are but roughly Bark human size, like, like Bark and Buck. Uh, the Barbazus that you've seen are are much are much larger, but okay. not huge, not large. Is, is there like Body an builders? us-sized devil? Is that something Ao could imitate and and be sort of generic us-sized devil? Yeah, you've seen those Barbazus. Do you want to try to impersonate a Barbazu? Yeah, she she turns into a sort of uh, Barbazu, not Bark and Buck, but just a Barbazu. Okay, so. Ao now looks like a Barbazu, and what do you do? What's the plan? Ao, you should, you should pretend like you're leading us, like like you're, you're bringing us to your avian. And and I I think there has to be something about my contract and his contract. I don't know. I'll figure yeah, it out in a minute. Yeah. Something something great you're, always comes to me. You're great at thinking on the on the on your feet. It's got to be something to do with not wearing shoes. Def- definitely, she says, and she sort of like shivers a little. That that's enough of that magic, she shouts suddenly. We can't have you doing magic around here, not around Euravian. Uh, and she and she motions to everyone and heads in the door. Be behaved. This is Euravian here, she sort of loudly announces as she walks in the room. Okay, so. Ao, as a Barbazu, walks into the room, and you notice that there are two Barbazus standing watch right by the door. And they're very taken aback by what's happening right now, so they are going to attempt to do a seek action against Ao's uh, disguise. So this is against your Deception DC, which is going to be four higher because of your wig of hold, uh, your hat. <laughs> Sorry. We can hold which, help there. Yeah, I forgot which uh, ridiculous thing we were talking about right now. <laughs> so, uh, so they're going to make a perception check. This is against your deception DC plus uh, with this bonus. That's 27 versus your deception DC. Yeah, that's going to be very hard for you to roll, unfortunately. That does not pass. You rolled a 27, and I believe my deception DC is a 32. Dang. All right. Wow. So the... Two Barbazus look at Ao and they're like, "Oh, dude, I didn't know that we got a new, a new uh, hire in here. What, what are you doing?" Well, the the portal finally opened up. There'll, there'll be more coming. We've all got work to do. We've all got our contracts. Are you doing your contract? I should mention that as Ao says, the portal has just opened. You hear faintly in the hallway, way <laughs> back behind you. Just like it sounds like two <laughs> Mack trucks running into each other over and over again. As like, and you, you, if you were to turn your shoulder and look over your shoulder, you'd see one of the Aranises flying, like getting knocked, like she's been punched through a, a building into Jacques's room and then like flying back across the room. It's like the two of them are just beating the hell out of each other. An epic battle. They just couldn't decide whose way was the way that actually achieved the portal. Right, Ayo? <laughs> That's right. As Trill walks by these two Barbazus, so it's like Ayo leads the way as a Barbazu. They've totally bought it. This Barbazu on the right turns and sees Trill and says, Oh, dude, it's that gnome. Uh... 
dude, I was, when I was uh, stuck in that, that room before, uh, this gnome was here. And you realize that this is Korlock, the devil that you... Oh, hey, buddy! Korlock is like, I'm sorry, I'm working right now, dude. I can't actually, bro, I, uh, let's catch up uh, later. I'm sorry you guys <laughs> captured the, again. It's bad luck, though. We met so. Korlock back in, like, the third level, right? That's right. <laughs> Wow, that was so long ago. <laughs> but Ao's able to lead the way, all of you in tow, pretending as though you have been captured, to the north, to something that looks like an office. How are these rolls this session? Like, we are just skirting by everything. Unfortunately, this session will end, and then next session will be just <laughs> out of luck. Back to but... natural one. <laughs> just when we, <laughs> just as we're entering a battle. And you see a devil standing behind a desk. He uh, has He's beautiful, majestic. majestic robes, the, an erudite look to him, wearing. Jewelry, gold. A monocle. A monocle. And he sees you. And he looks at Ao. He rolled a 34 on his perception check. Ooh. So he sees through. He Ooh. sees that Ao is not is not a Barbazio. Whoa. He doesn't know right. it. He he hasn't seen Ao, so he doesn't know Ao, but he knows that there's something not right here. He looks you up and down smiles he says oh it's you nice welcome to my little slice of hell here on galarian dudes and he looks at a and he says you it's okay you can drop the act listen you don't need your weapons i'm not your enemy and you're not mine come on let's get a look at each other let's let's check each other out Ao smiles at him and turns into Norman. She feels like this is just someone that, that maybe Norman can deal with better than she can. Hey, bro! We hey. heard you hate your contract! Oh, jumping straight to the point, are you? <clears throat> nice. I like that. I like somebody who is as focused on success as I am. And if you're in here looking to maximize your potential vis-a-vis -a, -vis a conversation about an agreement, then you have come to the right place. Norman sort of like started to like, not not like full dodge and weave, but he's like, he's like kind of, he's feeling it. It's like, yeah, yeah, right place, right time. It's a synchronicity, you know, like two minds, six minds, all these minds just like meeting up and harnessing the power for a better future, man. Yeah, there are a lot of minds, but there are also a lot of losers out there. Just because I see that you have a mind, it doesn't mean that I'm, like, impressed really all that much. Word. But you know what I am? I Word. know. You get it. <laughs> you know, it's actually not surprising to me that you would be so set on getting in here. The, uh, the universe you live in doesn't have much of anyone as success-pilled and achievement-maxed as I am, so... Oh my god, is dude gonna try and sell us some Bitcoin? This is an MLM, but I think we're getting in early. That's the key. It's the best time to get in. Oh, I hate him so much. Nice, bro. Yeah. Nice, you work out. Yeah. Oh yeah, you. If you want to get where I am, you got to work out really early. You got to wake up early enough that you get a full workout in before anybody else starts their day. If you can do that, you get two days for every day that they get, and that's what it takes. If you actually bet on yourself, <laughs> like I do, <laughs> then you get where I am. A lot of people talk big. Not a lot of people are willing to make the sacrifice that it takes to get to where I am. <laughs> so this, and he dramatically casts his hands down to point down to his lower body. He's like, this 
is what that looks like. Hey, I want you to know, I'm not pissed off or anything about the devils that you killed on the way here. It just sort of shows me that they weren't motivated enough to succeed, and if they had the mindset that they needed to have to get to where they need to get to, then that wouldn't have happened. So I just want you to know, we are cool. There is no hard feelings. Yeah, man, like life just gives you these obstacles, you know, and you have to decide if you're going to use them and harness them or if you're going to let them define the absence inside of you, you know? And so, like, I'm yes. sorry about that, but, like, we got to hurdle. You shouldn't be sorry. We Don't be sorry. Don't apologize. Don't be apologize. Don't apologize. You're the way that you are. I'm the way that I am. Right? Yeah. Are you going to apologize for winning? I, I think I'm having an aneurysm. <laughs> uh, behind Ao, Mag is shaking her head lustily. <laughs> <laughs> Isthin, okay. I think, is like sort of buying in. Like, Do you have any literature I could look <laughs> at? Um, Do you have any Isthin? learning course for $500 yeah. that I could buy into? <laughs> Uh, a PDF, a premium <laughs> devil uh, fixative? Yeah, if we don't invest in ourselves, then what are we doing? I feel like we're about two weeks away from Euravian launching a YouTube channel called Euravian Academy. <laughs> Listen, if you don't take this opportunity, you're actively hurting yourself. <laughs> uh, and that's actually what I want to talk to you about. I've got a deal to make with you. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity that actually, if you don't take it, you are actively hurting yourself. So that's actually a great segue. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to fight you. I didn't get to where I am by entering into needless violence. I'm not your enemy, but I do know why you're here. You've come to take the spirit of Belcora Haravex down and stop the threat that she poses to the world above us, right? Bullseye, right? B right? Bullseye, 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 bullseye. <laughs> For some of us, maybe, Norman says, sort of cryptically. But behind Norman, um, Mag is nodding, but really slowly and like with a kind of confused look. This time. He's like, she gets where I'm coming from. She gets it. Well, let's talk. If that's what you want, we can make a deal that will push you to the next level of success and will push me to the next level as well. And it'll stop a lot of needless death. We don't need more violence, right? We don't need to, we don't need to get into that. Okay, here's the deal. You said I've made a bad deal and you're, listen, it takes a big man to admit when he's made a mistake. And I'm a huge man and I will tell you <laughs> that I have made a really, really bad mistake. <laughs> I currently need quote unquote third party agents to get me out of this awful place and get me back home. I've got to get something, but I'm not allowed to get it myself. And I'm not allowed to get any of my bros or bro debts from hell to do it. So what I need is the hands of a mortal foe of Belcora to deliver something to me. My devils can't help me. The flesh warp soldiers can't help me. So what do you think? Will you get this thing for me? Sorry, we got to go to hell. I just want to make sure I get the deal. Cause no. like the thing you need to get is here on Galarian. Will it involve hurting anyone? Um, no, you don't have to hurt a single person. Do we get to keep our souls? Of course. I'm not interested in your soul. What? What's in it for us? What's in it for uh, for you is once you deliver me what it is that I want, I will clear the way. If you need me to, I can have devils dig out the, the boulders blocking your way down, the magical barrier blocking the elevator down. I'll get rid of that too. I'll clear out shop. Wait, wait, there's a magical barrier? Yeah, that you ran into it like seven months ago. Don't worry about it. Oh, no. there's a yeah. You saw it. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'll clear out. No more devils here. No more. No invasion. Nothing. Nothing like that. And you guys will just go home. 
we'll just go home. So, will you get me what I want? Euravian, what exactly does your contract with Belcora say? Legally, I'm required to build an army for Belcora, and then Belcora delivers me my prize. If she's not around to deliver that prize to me, the contract can't be fulfilled. As soon as I get that prize, the contract is done, and I owe nothing to Belcora. And what would our contract with you say exactly? We don't even need to do this as a contract. All you have to do is bring me what I want, and we will go. If you need a contract, I'll write it out in plainest language you ever heard. Bring me, bring me what I need. We will go, we will clear the way, and you will never see any of us ever again. It's a great deal. Okay, but what is it exactly you need? All I need is the soul of one person. Oh, one soul, one soul, Norman says, looking around. That's no big deal, there's one soul. All I need is the soul of Carmen Rajani. Oh, a particular person. Interesting. Who was going to be that asshole? And we'll pick up from there next time. <sighs> so excited to learn more. What would have happened if we had killed Carmen Rajani? Well, this sounds like this part of the dungeon would have been much harder. of Ruin is a tabletop gold production produced under the Paizo Incorporated Community Use Policy using trademarks and copyrights owned by Paizo that are covered under that policy. Paizo does not recognize, endorse, or sponsor this project in any way, and we are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. All original characters and content in the Roots of Ruin are the property of Tabletop Gold, and all rights are reserved. We at Tabletop Gold would love to hear from you. On our website, tabletopgold.com, you can learn more about us and our shows, pick up great merch, and connect to the best online community in all of podcasting. Thanks for listening.